Hello guys, Trek Yards has returned yet again. Ooh. Captain Foley and Commander Cockings here with a very special guest star, Mr. Rick Sternbach. Welcome to the show, Rick. Hey, thanks for having me. It's great. Uh, Rick, of course, has designed many ships from many different Star Trek productions, including TNG, DS9, and Voyager. Today so we pretty want much to everything do... then. <laughs> yes. Uh, today we want to do a quick briefing on a ship we've already done an episode for, actually, the Delta Flyer. So this is just a quick discussion talking about the designing of this little Voyager favorite. Um, if you want to see the full episode, please click on the link at the end of the show or go to trekyards.com and watch episode number four. Okay, so we look at all this unique and versatile shuttles in all of Star Trek. Um, how did you design the ship, Rick? And, and what elements were you told to include in the ship? Uh, how, many, how much time do you have to spend in it from initial sketches to finished production? Was it a rush job or you know, what, what went into the design process? Well, a Delta Flyer, you know, we, we, we saw that it was going to appear in a script, okay? It was called the All-Environment Shuttle. Didn't even get the name Delta Flyer yet. Uh, but, uh, you know, with something like the Delta Flyer, yes, they give us, you know, they give us a, a little bit of extra lead time uh, to design it. Uh, you know, the, the set designers had to come up with the interior, okay? Uh, unlike the... Next generation, big, you know, the big Type Six shuttle. Mm. Uh, we did not have a full exterior set piece, uh, so we only had the interior. Mm. Now, I started just doodling like crazy, shapes and shapes and more shapes. Um, and I think, uh, I think, Jim Martin and I think. Uh, uh, one of the other illustrators on the lot, you know, was, uh, you know, did some some preliminary Delta Flyer shapes. Okay, um, you know, we didn't really coordinate. We just drew and drew and drew. Okay, uh, and I had a, you know, I had a sheet full of of uh, of uh, you know just little shape duels. Okay, we knew it was Starfleet. We knew it had to have maybe a couple of Borg enhancements. Uh, so we'd get green lighting and little <laughs> black and green pieces going on. Um, and uh, I had one shape that was a little further along than the others. Uh, the set designers were starting to flesh out the cockpit area, mm. the interior. Okay, So I incorporated parts of what they were doing in my sketches. And Dan Curry, one of our uh, 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 visual effects producers, um, he comes walking by my desk. You know, he came up to the art department for, for a visit. He, he looks at, at some of the shapes that I'm doing, and he points to this one particular ship, and he says, yeah, I like that. <laughs> you, know, let, 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 you know, let's see what we can do with this. Okay, you know, Dan knows his visual effects. Uh, you know, he's, uh, he, he's a great designer in his own right, and... Uh, you know, he pointed at that, and I just started fleshing that out. Uh, you know, we had a few little changes here and there, but uh, uh, the the shape, you know, the cockpit got locked in. Okay, so I had to match the windows. You know, I had to match the forward window, the side windows, uh, but everything else was pretty much, you know. Um, pretty much up for grabs uh, in terms of, uh, of shape because the CG guys would be, you know, building it, mm -hmm. um, you know. And, uh, all right, you know, we ended up with a little bit of a scale problem with the garage doors in the shuttle bay. But, you know, that, you know, I, I what can you do, you know? There are a few of those problems. It, it became what it yeah. became. You know, the, the Delta Flyer uh, became a reality. Um, you know, they even worked in the uh, they even worked in the deployable and retractable uh, uh, warp pods, which was terrific. So I put a couple of lines in, you know, on the blueprint to indicate the separation. Uh, they built it, they animated it, uh, and and it was terrific. Um, parts of the parts of the interior, okay, uh, were maybe a little bit bigger than the hull. Okay, so it was sort of like a TARDIS. Uh, there were there were sections in the back that maybe were a little bit bigger than what the hull could accommodate, but it's been like that in Hollywood for 
decades. So, was there any yeah. things that were pointed out in the script to start off with? You said it was called an, an environmental shuttle. I think you said. What, were there any other descriptions? The director said, "No, we want this. The ship we want this in the ship." Or was it pretty much just make a shape, like I said? Or was there any direction? I, no, I mean, by the time by the time the Delta Flyer <clears throat> uh, was getting designed, you know, we we knew it had to go into a Starfleet design. Okay, um, we did not get any, you know, specific direction. Uh, because we, we, we knew what they were looking for. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, like I say, a couple of little things got, uh, got altered on the way to the blueprint stage. Uh, but they were just, they were minor details. Okay. They, the producers, you know, they loved the design. They, they got it approved for, uh, you know, for building the set pieces, um, uh, and building the CG. Um, you know, it got built. <laughs> Did it start out with the idea of not having full-on warp nacelles? I mean, up until that point, every Starfleet vessel, I mean, the, the Dunning runabout, all those things, they're distinct nacelles. This is the big away from that. So was that part of the script, or was that just something you wanted to really move the evolution of shuttles forward into? Well, it, it, you know, it, it, they, wanted the, you know, they wanted the thing to have warp capability. Okay, uh, but they also wanted it to look sleek, mm -hmm. all right. Um, you know, with the uh, the speedboat shuttle, the really you know the really short, uh, 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 small shuttle that we had toward the end of Voyager, uh, the speedboat yeah. was you know the only directive for that was it had to look sleeker, faster. You know, it had nice cells, okay, mm -hmm. uh, but the Delta Flyer. I, you know, I guess the, the, you know, if there was any kind of directive, it was that the Delta Flyer should be able to operate in an atmosphere, in space, um, and we saw it underwater, didn't we? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, well as well. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, if the, if, the, if the warp mechanism, okay, was not a, a traditional nacelle, it was still there. You, could, you still knew what part of it made work. Now, one of the unique things about the Delta Flyer would indeed have to be its pop-out bits, like the warp, the nacelles, et cetera. Um, was that something that you yourself came up with, or was that what you were directed to do from the higher-ups? Now, the reason I'm asking is because Voyager seems to be the only series uh, where we see Federation ships with these type of complicated moving parts. I don't know if that was just the mindset behind the Voyager you know, I think I think in 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 my initial sketches, okay, uh, the warp those those warp grills, okay, were simply embedded in the wings, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I I could not tell you at what point, uh, you know, we put the separation line in the wing to have it to have it come out, um, you, you know. I, you know when you're when you're asking about like producer directives, um, you know maybe one of the producers had the idea, but it filters down, okay, so that by the time I hear about something like that, it's coming from one of our visual effects guys. Yeah. Okay. So you know the the, the lines of communication are you know they get kind of fragmented and complicated, and uh, you know if if. You know, let's say if Dan Curry comes to me and says, um, you know, hey, could you move that little phaser strip, uh, you know, to, to here because we want a different kind of beam thing, okay? I, you know, I, I, just, I just go and do it, but I don't, you know, I don't necessarily record every, yeah, yeah. you know, every, every, every instruction that comes down from up above. In our episode, we know that the Delta Flyer only goes warp six as its maximum, mm. which from its look, you would assume would go a lot faster. Now, I'm just wondering if that translates into the smaller nacelles that mm. are necessary for the retraction, if that's why it's so much slower than we expected it to be when we did the episode. You know, putting a number limitation, you know, that's, that's, that's not, you know, that's not something that comes from, from me. Mm -hmm. Uh, you, you know, the writers will write stuff like that. Um, 
you know, if the Delta Flyer could only go warp six, well, all right, so be it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, you know, the technical stuff, okay, the, you know, the techie, um, you know, techie ideas and techie explanations for things, um, they live in a sort of a separate world from mm. the script writing. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, a, a script may say one thing, but I, I may be off to the side saying, no, 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 we could do better than this. <laughs> you know, but Warp I'm not 12, writing. Damn it. <laughs> you know, I'm not writing the stories. Uh, you know, we 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 serve. You know, we, we serve the uh, yeah. the the drama. And so, when you initially designed the Delta Flyer um, for this specific episode, because it was built, in, it was actually built in an episode for the episode. Um, what was the original idea behind the ship? Was it intended to become a major part of the show, sort of like the Defiant for DS9, or was it sort of designed? Make, thinking the fans might like it so it might come back I mean it became a big part of the show and, and, and appeared so much but what was the original plan behind the ship uh, that, you know that's a writer question producer question uh, I think they just wanted to see something cool yeah. you know I think they wanted to see something new and something cool yeah. um, you know um, with things like the shuttles okay we also told them about the aero shuttle which is kind of like a captain's yacht but that's for a whole different discussion <laughs> yeah exactly uh, we will be talking about that later but do you um, know if the vibe was to actually have it come back regularly or, or was it would have been one of those one-offs you know I, I draw stuff I don't write stories <laughs> <laughs> okay and my next point we've kind of we've kind of gone over a little bit but another thing that we mentioned in our Delta Flyer episode was the fact that the ship was originally designed to be smaller than its final on-screen version actually was. Yes. Uh, reason being that the internal sets made the external measurements need some tweaking. <laughs> I believe that you were quoted as saying something along the lines of once filming begins, sometimes things like that need to be changed. So were you happy that the ship was made larger or would have you preferred to have the smaller design that you had originally intended? Well, you know, when I, when I originally drew up uh, the, the first orthographic sketches okay you know top view side view front view back view uh, I really wanted the those uh, wings to fit within the shuttle bay doors it would be helpful yes <laughs> okay uh, and and the design of the shuttle bay opening itself is like it's a whole nother huge complicated story um, uh, because at one point, and you have to connect the dots with this whole mishmash. Um, at one point, we were thinking very seriously that we were going to build an honest to goodness shuttle bay set. Wow. We didn't do that. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. When we were going to build a shuttle bay, now, now stick with me here, um, we could only build the doors a certain width. Okay. And that's why they ended up looking like they do on the outside of Voyager. Okay. Because we all sort of kind of were going to match them to a set. Uh, yeah. I mean, so by the time the Delta Flyer came around, you know, I was thinking, oh, you know, it would have been really nice to have the garage doors wider. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But, you know, again, like I say, we do what we do yeah. with what we got. Um, so if, if the Delta Flyer's wingspan, you know, is 70 foot and if the shuttle bay is only 50 foot, well, okay, there's a conceptual problem, but I, you know, I, 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 I keep up with some of the discussions online. Uh, I understand the angst, yeah. <laughs> you know, that it causes, but, uh, uh, you know, you know. At the end, it's, you know, it, it's it's a science fiction story. It's a TV show. Um, you know, somehow miraculously, that Delta Flyer goes in and out of those garage doors and never breaks anything. Maybe they beam it out. You know, you know. Maybe they shrink it and then get, they get bigger. Honestly, I've got not that much of a problem believing that Tom Paris completely forgot about the doors when he designed it. I just thought, I'm gonna make it as big. It has to be. Oh, <laughs> yeah, and they have to rebuild well, the doors. I mean, why wouldn't you, you know, just rebuild the doors from the outside? I mean, they've landed and re reinstalled warp coils. Why couldn't they land and change the shuttle bay doors? I am happy to go with that. 
Oh, I'm I'm perfectly willing to <laughs> accept that you know at some at some planetary layover, they got out the 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 torches and yes. cut you know cut a couple of wider. Bits, you or, know? or more realistically, they just they just um, made the ship bigger, so it so it comes like the whole ship. Just oh, make the whole ship bigger. Yeah, okay. that'd work as well. <laughs> Look, if if Deep Space Nine could shrink, you know, oh, the runner boat, yeah, and the Defiant, and the Defiant <laughs> grew ten times, isn't it ridiculous? No. Wait, you talk about your, you know, you talk about your crazy science fiction ideas. Yeah, okay, you know, <laughs> there's nothing you can't say. Yeah. It's anyway, science fiction. Anything's it's, possible. So. But it's all fun. It's all fun. It yeah. was the lens on the camera. There you go. Wink. Anyway, so back to the Delta Flyer. Yes. Um, what were some of the design influences you've had on the ship specifically? Um, did, how did you see it fitting into the Star Trek canon? Because it's quite a unique take. Um, and were there any negative reactions to that design? Because it is quite a departure from the normal shuttle design. I mean, I've I've never run into anyone who who said a bad word about the flyer. Mm. Uh, you know, it's it, the the lineage, the design lineage. You know, was it, it it very definitely borrowed pieces and parts from uh, previous Starfleet shuttles. Okay, uh, you know, you can tell it's Starfleet mm -hmm. because of all the Starfleet looking parts on it, um, and yeah. I, you know, and, and I like the fact that it's, you know, it's a sleek ship that's got, it's got a front and it's got a back and it looks like it flies real fast. Mm. Um, Hot Rod was the uh, Tom Paris. Yeah, but, but the, you know, the uh, influence, you know, you could, you could say, it, you know, it, it was influenced by the entire lineage of smaller ships in, in Star Trek. Uh, look at all of the shuttles, you know, going back to the Galileo. Uh, you can you can line them up and you can see how the styling changed. I mean, it's just like you know, it's just like automotive styling. Mm. You know, things evolve. Yeah. Uh, also, the flyer had the addition of Borg technologies, which had <laughs> never been incorporated into a Federation ship before, or explained. <laughs> yeah. Now, were you given free reign to do what you wanted with that tech um, that was being integrated, or were those? Kind of done separately or by other people. I guess. No, I, mean, I guess we, the main question I would be asking is, as a ship designer, do you plan out what systems are on the sh or tech that might be on the ship as you're doing it, or is that kind of added after the fact? Well, I think in, in, in the in the case of the Borg enhancements, uh, and and I still don't know exactly what those Borg pieces <laughs> did. Maybe, watch, you know, watch episode four; you might get an answer. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> Uh, but uh, you know some of the some of the early Delta Flyer sketches show a lot of cutouts in the hull with board stuff implanted in there. Mm -hmm. uh, you know those were cut down to you know a few select little areas. Yeah. Uh, but they were definitely there. They glowed green. They were darkish uh, board sorts of shapes, um, and. You know, yes, you could definitely assign functions to them. You know, maybe they help with the shielding. Maybe they helped with the warp uh, geometry, flow, quantum something, something. Techno uh, You know, uh, you know, but but from from a uh, just from a design standpoint, you know, a visual standpoint. Okay, they're interesting cutouts, and they glow and they look cool. Then you go back and you sort of retrofit the explanations. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, if I were if I were to do you know the uh, the Voyager Tech Manual with a section on the flyer, <laughs> I would definitely be able you know in a snap, okay, to come up with uh, functions, mm -hmm. uh, energy requirements, uh, you know, uh, component lifetimes, all that kind of techy stuff. I mean, that stuff is easy. So now that we're Quite a way after uh, Voyager first came out, the Delta Flight is an iconic piece of the Voyager storyline. Why do you think the fans reacted so strongly to it? And because of their, I think, reaction, it appeared so frequently, even got destroyed and rebuilt. And, and, and why do you think it's just so loved today? I mean, what made it that, you know, success? Well, it, it's, it, I think it's one of those situations where, you know, you have a smaller spacecraft that you can use to get away from the main spacecraft. 
Okay, that and yes, sense. you know, <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, you can do you can do cool stories on Voyager, but you can also do cool stories where you get away from Voyager, go interesting places uh, crash with a, a few times. <laughs> yeah, crash a few times. <laughs> exactly, exactly right. Um, and uh, you know, do more interesting things as the um, as the seasons develop. Um, you know, if if all we had from season one to season seven was Voyager, okay, we'd be sort of hard pressed to come up with with lots and lots of interesting, you know, off planet stories and that sort of thing. Uh, but I think with the addition of the flyer, it's like, okay, hey everybody, let's jump in the let's jump in the car and go somewhere. <laughs> yes. Well, okay, guys, I think that about does it for a behind-the-scenes look at the Delta Flyer. Uh, we will With be the having Rick. Yeah. Yes, we will be having Rick on board to join us uh, when we examine the USS Voyager, or the Intrepid class, as she is known. So stay tuned for that. There are also many other ships and stations designed by Rick, which we will be discussing with him when the time arrives. So hopefully you guys enjoyed um, this brief addition to the Delta Flyer episode. If you haven't seen it already, go to trekgears.com and watch episode four, or cl click the link immediately following this episode. So on behalf of Samuel and myself, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for joining us today, Rick. Hey, had a great time. Thanks a lot. And please be sure to like and subscribe for regular Trek Yards updates as we look forward to seeing you all very soon. This is Captain Foley and the Trek Yards team signing off until next time. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.